Uh, welcome learners. Uh, this session is completely devoted to information and communication technologies. And most of you must be knowing about this particular concept and we are in such a stage that we are moving ahead uh, with the digital transformation in different parts of our lives. And with the complex situation arising, the crisis situation due to arising due to COVID-19, the digital transformation has geared up. And most of us, they are learning and have been equipped enough to handle this communication technologies, the information technologies in each and every uh, area of our lives. So it is now becoming an important source uh, of information, of uh, disseminating information, of sharing information and of uh, procuring information in different forms. So this particular session uh, is very important for NGOs uh, because uh, information and communication technologies has become a part and parcel of our lives and NGOs are uh, also having this kind of uh, technologies in their uh, specific NGOs, whether they are working for the health sector, whether they are working for the education sector, whether they are working for uh, the poverty alleviation part. So whatever the case may be, they are using information and communication technologies. And basically in this session, what we'll do is we'll just scan through what is information, what is communication, what is technology and how they are clubbed to make it ICT or information and communication technologies. And then we look how NGOs, uh, they get uh, impacted by ICT and how important and how relevant ICT is for them. So all this is covered in this session. and. Uh, there is a lot of information available on the web, uh, on the internet, where you can have the additional information. There are a lot of NGOs. There is in fact a whole, uh, uh, you can say guidelines and a book uh, released by United Nations also. And I have given the reference also. And where you can just go and see why digital uh, world or digital technology or information communication technology is important for NGOs. Now let us see what is ICT. Now if you see this uh, flow chart, you'll find that ICT is in the middle and I means information, C means communication and T means uh, technology and each and every aspect is interconnected with each other. You cannot just handle technology without the information and without the uh, communication. Now, if there is any of the uh, part missing, suppose information is missing. So you say it is communication technologies. So communication technology is fine, but then how do you communicate if you don't have information regarding a particular area, if you don't have information regarding a particular subject, uh, if you don't have information regarding a particular field so how would you communicate and suppose for example mobiles uh, if you remember in first course that is bms001 uh, introduction to ngo management we had covered this part ict and the use of mobiles and radios for communication so there we have used how mobiles has affected ngos and how mobiles have impacted ngos and how important mobiles are for ngos so i'm just giving this example so that you can understand what is why do we need information technology and uh, communication together and uh, that is why uh, when I take the example of mobile, so suppose I want to communicate with you through the mobile, but then suppose I make a call and if I make a call, what would I speak? If I don't know what is to be, what information is to be given, how would I speak and what would I speak? I will just say yes or no if from the other end you are speaking, but that doesn't make a technology effective. So that is why information, communication and technology, they have to be clubbed together. And that is why 
we use the word information communication technology initially we uh, in earlier stages we use the word it that is information technology but now we have included this word as uh, the communication word so that the impact of technology is more effective more uh, you can say beneficial for the organization who are using ict who and one thing i would like to mention if you see the study material there are certain case studies also on ict and use of information communication and technology but in present context this has become a, you can say an integral part of any organization and individuals also without ict nothing can work now for example another example i'm going to give it uh, to you is that how am I communicating with you uh, and if you see we are communicating with each other through a platform and that platform is a technological platform but then information and communication is being provided through that particular technology to you and this is ICT so this is all what is ICT and we'll just see uh, different aspects of information communication and technology and we'll just scan through it because it is very very important to have the basic knowledge of ICT so that we can apply all these concepts for the NGOs now what is an information we have been talking about ict i have given you a number of examples couple of examples to understand the ict but we need to know what exactly is information information has to be proper information has to be substantial information has to be precise it's not that anything and everything can uh, should be informed so that is why we need to know what is information and for ngos in particular this demarcation of information in different forms is very very important because in present context they have been using social media to a large extent and what kind of information has to be disseminated that is to be decided by the ngo itself so information is some kind of a knowledge which is created by processing of data and it is exchanged amongst the people people can be anybody it can be the community it can be the stakeholders it can be the internal internal communication uh, like uh, the employees of the organization etc so information is a knowledge which is created by processing of data and it is to be exchanged. So there are three components in the information part. First is the knowledge. Second is the processing of data. And the third part is the exchange of this knowledge. So that is information. Now coming to the communication part. Now what is communication? Communication is the process of sending the information from one person to another. Information is one part, one aspect, but how this information will be relayed to the other party, that is done through communication. So, communication involves information also. So, therefore, communication in communication, it is a simple process of sending the information which we have been, uh, which we have uh, processed and that has been uh, disseminated to the uh, other party. So that is communication. Now coming to technology. This is the third aspect. Now technology is the kind of skills, the methods, the processes or the device which is used to achieve a goal. That means what is the goal? The goal is to communicate the proper information to the stakeholder or to the concerned person. So that is where we use technology. So technology is skills, methods, processes or device used to achieve goal. We'll see how, it, what kind of devices we can use for technology. Now when we talk about information and communication technologies, we have integration of information technologies and the communication process. 
and it involves incorporating modern techniques into the process of interaction. I gave you an example of mobiles. Now, if you just go, say, some uh, 18, 19 or 20 years back, just a couple of decades back, if you see how the mobiles uh, were shaped or what was the structure of the mobiles, you won't be able to believe that the mobiles were so big enough, they were just like cordless phones and they had a specific antenna. So that device was mobile and still we have the device as mobile, but the structure have changed. So we are using modern techniques, modern technologies for the process of interaction through different devices. And the devices also keep on changing with times. When technology becomes obsolete almost in six months, so every time you see different versions of mobiles coming, different apps included, different uh, uh, different kinds of uh, specifications are included in, uh, in different devices. So all this is incorporating the modern technologies. This includes all the applications, the systems, the networks and the devices which allows people to exchange information in a digital world. Now let us go back again to the past. And if you see, when the trunk calls were made, most of the young generation may not even know what trunk calls were. So there was a communication network where there were uh, two or three stages involved for one call to reach the other party. So in that case, the exchange of information was used through those modes. And there was operators and there were operators involved and the trunk call was placed, the booking was done and then the communication was uh, relayed to the, uh, the concerned person or concerned party. But now if you see you just make a call and you can just communicate in any part of the world. So globally we are well connected and in, in, in COVID times this connectivity helped us to stay stable. So it includes all kinds of applications, systems, networks, devices and this allows the people to, people to exchange information in the digital world and the digital world has transformed like anything. Information and communication technology also covers uh, any product which stores, retrieves, manipulates, transmits or receive information electronically in a digital form. Earlier, uh, these included the cassettes. Uh, I don't have the sample of the cassettes, uh, but we can show you the picture of the cassettes. Uh, they were audio cassettes and the tape recorders, uh, they used the cassettes, then they were the DVDs, uh, they were the CDs and if you see uh, the present day computers, they don't even have a socket for the CDs also. So everything is changing and we had video cassettes also, they were the big uh, cassettes, uh, audio cassettes were smaller and video cassettes were bigger. So earlier forms of ICTs included these things, but with the emergence of technology, the internet and World Wide Web, the revolution in ICT took place and it includes a range of components and services in the present times. Technology is one of the most important aspect of ICT, but without information and communication, the technology is redundant. And technology is used to digitize the process of communication and information exchange. ICT involves uh, different kinds of information, uh, different kinds of communication. Uh, and it's a combination of information technology that is IT and communication technology that is CT. And it improves the efficiency and effectiveness of a particular task. Now you see, these are some of the components of information communication technology. And if you see the cycle, it starts with hardware, there's a software, there's a data, there can be a cloud technology, there's human resource also, and there's internet. 
Now you'll see these particular components of ICT one by one and then we'll move uh, how ICT is relevant for NGOs. Now, what is an internet? Everybody is using internet and we are the second largest country in the world uh, who has the usage of internet, highest usage of internet uh, in the world. So we should know what is internet. And if we see internet, it is a global network of interconnected computer systems. It's very easy for us to say, aapke pas internet hai? So this kind of question is like, uh, do you have an internet? So what do we mean to say is that internet is something which is now a common word which is exchanged between each other. So it is a global network of interconnected computer systems and it has an ability to connect different people or organizations through network services provided by service providers. World Wide Web, that is www, is a collection of different web pages which is accessible over the internet. At present, internet access is provided through broadband technologies such as cable internet and ADSL and that is asymmetrical digital uh, subscriber line. We won't go into these details because these are the technical details. So we now know what is an internet. So it's a global network. We are connected through different computer systems. Now coming to the other part. Uh, of other component of ICT. What is a software? It is a set of instructions or procedures programmed for executing a specific task. It, this includes operating systems like you have Android and iOS and it has applications which are installed on a computer or any kind of a device. Application software are the softwares which can be downloaded or installed by users to carry out required tasks. And application software, if I give you a short form of it, it is apps. In social media, we have been using lots of apps. And uh, during the COVID time, the government of India, they started an app, Arogya Setu. Similarly, now since the vaccination is coming, so we are ag again going to have a, a different app for registration. So these are application softwares, which we can use to carry out a required task. Now, why am I talking about application software? You must be wondering that whether this is required for NGOs or not. It is required for NGOs. Now, if you see the communication the NGOs they uh, take, and if you just go to the uh, internet and just see different kinds of apps, you will find and the social media apps you will find the ngos they have been using these apps to disseminate the information about their ngo and it can reach to a larger network it can initially it was in at the localized level at the community level but now since the application softwares are there and they are able to use they are equipped to use the uh, digital mode of uh, these softwares so the NGOs they can reach to a global setup and for funding this is very important. So operating softwares include softwares which are required for supporting a particular kind of an application software and this has to be installed in a computer system or any device whether it is a mobile or something else. Now, when I'm talking about operating software, it can be, I just gave you an example, it can be iOS or Android. Now, different softwares have different, uh, have different compatibility towards a particular application software. Hardware. It's like a brain. We, we have our hardware in the brain. So it's like a, a hardware which has neurons. So it includes the physical components of a computer system. For example, desktop, which ha desktop, any kind of a computer system has a desktop, a top, it has a mouse. Now, if, uh, if you're not using mouse, if you're using um, 
a wireless mouse that's fine if you're not using mouse you have a touch screen a touch pad also then there's a keyboard there's a cpu there's a hard disk now with the development of technologies hardware devices have become relatively advanced such as smartphones laptops or camera data data are the raw facts which are required to be processed for deriving any meaning from it raw data doesn't make any any sense so the raw data has to be processed and this is done through technology and it can be in the form of text figures audios videos or images but they have to be placed properly to give a meaning to that data usually the data is measured in bits and bytes and it requires several storage devices like pen drives hard drives to be stored for future requirement now this is the new concept which is known as cloud based technology uh, cloud includes the data centers available across remote location which can be accessed by users over the internet so everything is available you, you need not carry the pen drives you need not carry the hard disks uh, to access the data it is available on the internet but the connectivity has to be there to access this particular data cloud based technologies provide services to people over the internet without physically installing the software into systems users only required to sign in into cloud services with a registered email id to access those services so that means it is secure and anybody and everybody cannot use it in cloud based technology there is no need to maintain the server rooms for hardware and download or update software for carrying out a process it is easy interface for people who are not well versed with software development it provides flexibility and wider access to operate from any location and it gives data security human resources that means people they are the most important component of ICT and they are the human element of ICT they are responsible for storing transmitting and manipulating data and the analysis and interpretation of information varies from person to person now when we talk about human resource and we what when we talk about ngo why they are important because most of the ngos in fact all the ngos they are dependent on their uh, respective human resources so human resource can be in form of data entry operators they can be solutions managers they can be uh, people who are operating the computers who are operating the ict all this is required and for this the skilled person is required to uh, access the information Uh, and disseminate it through a particular kind of a technology these are some of the advantages of ict that means it improves communication and exchange of information it provides working opportunities in remote locations it provides flexible working hours it can be personalized according to requirements uh, of the particular organization and in our case it is ngos it provides global in interconnectivity i gave you the example of social media it it uh, like from ease of job most of the people are working from home so ease of job is there and it aids in interaction process such as content development like we are doing now there are certain limitations of ict anything which is in this world has its advantages and has its limitations as well for ict to work effectively properly you need to have a stable internet connectivity it has to be cost effective it requires basic technical skills these are some of the uh, applications of ict for governance you have ep payrolls and that is applicable for ngos also biometric attendance uh, then you have medical uh, records you can just store it through ict like patient records diagnostic machines research and development like most of the ngos they are working for the health sector so through this uh, ict uh, uh, they can have the access 
uh, to such kind of information there is a concept of artificial inten intelligence also which we are using in the present uh, day uh, experiences uh, but we won't go into detail uh, of that particular concept much but that is also very important for NGOs. Uh, ICT can be used in agriculture like automated irrigation facility, GPS enabled harvesting and for tourism also it is uh, being used like GPS enabled cabs, online ticket booking, real-time hotel check-in etc. For commerce, it's like online shopping, mobile wallets, investment apps. Then for education, digital classrooms, real-time quiz, blended learning. These are all the applications and uses of ICT. And for education and commerce purpose, uh, agriculture purpose, the NGOs, they can very well uh, use and optimize the use of ICT. Now this is the link uh, of uh, the United Nations document where you will find that uh, they have used the word civil society organization that is a very common word used for NGOs and they have just mentioned how the future is going to be with the digital transformation. So why do NGOs they require ICT this is the question. And these are some of the answers to strengthen the internal system, to reach to the larger base, to enhance the effectiveness of their working. That is very important. As I gave you an example, through social media, they can reach to a larger base. They can reach globally where the funding is involved. So they can be helped by people who know about that NGO through ICT. So you need to read this document and this document is very interesting and though it is uh, it was published in 2010 but it, at present also it is relevant. These are some of the areas where uh, ICT can be applied to NGOs like digital infrastructure, application of programs, implementation of programs, monitoring, evaluation, fundraising. All this we are going to see in the, uh, in the other sessions. Now, if you see this photograph, uh, this is from uh, a, a nearby NGO, Arpan Mitra Sangam, uh, in New Delhi itself. And you see uh, uh, the ICT in use in this particular NGO, where uh, a solution-based education system is being used and the teachers are being taught about it, how to disseminate the information and how uh, the communication is possible through this solution. Now you see the teacher is trying to learn uh, the uh, nuances of this particular solution so that she can uh, communicate it to the uh, children of that particular NGO. Now this is all about uh, ICT and role of ICT in NGOs. There are a number of case, case studies and a good example is uh, Read India initiative which has really worked for the education sector in the in the past nine months it has grown and it has provided online education to many uh, children so they, these are just few examples but you can uh, just go through or you can surf through the internet and you'll find other number of examples so uh, ICT is important digital transformation is the go word for in the present context thank you so much